something really likable about beer. I think that uh, all the best craft breweries started out as somebody's passion as a home brewer. I want something new, I want something local, I want something that everybody else can't get. It feels really good to go to a bar and hear someone order the, you know, the beer that you made. Isn't there an old quote about, you know, life's too short to drink bad beer? There's really no place like Fort Collins out there, really. First off is that I'm an engineer and I enjoy scientific thought, scientific processes. So a lot of it, uh, my interest in homebrewing is the curiosity about the chemical, biological processes that go into making beer from scratch. I enjoy knowing the processes, the materials, and the effort that goes into making the things that I, I use on a regular basis. So if I like drinking beer, I really enjoy understanding the process uh, behind making beer and doing it myself to produce beer that I can drink. I grew up and my, and my brother was brewing beer for a long time and so I was a helper and then I just started drinking beer. People ask me what's your favorite type of beer? I don't have a favorite type of beer. I, I like all different styles. I will drink ambers, browns, stouts, porters, IPAs, whatever. So that's the fun in doing the homebrew is you can brew whatever you want. There was a lot of time when I wasn't brewing but in the last six years I've really gotten back into it, and I've started brewing a lot more beers. I share it a lot with friends. Here, try this. Let me know what you think. The fact is, craft beer has really stepped up in the last 20 or even 30 years from what it was. And the big impetus for home brewing used to be that you couldn't find the beer that you wanted. And now, there's a lot of really good beer. I think for the home brewer, one of the great gratifications is the idea, and it's true at this level too, of going from um, concept to reality. The idea of being able to sort of hone your craft and the gratification and the fulfillment of having a vision, being able to articulate it through a process, and then um, being able to consume it, I mean, that's tremendous. The brewing process is no longer a secret. Everything's out there. It's just a matter of whether you can execute it and then having the tools and ingredients to, you know, make it happen. Well, I think uh, the homebrewing uh, movement as it is today owes a lot to uh, President Jimmy Carter back in the 70s. You probably heard about that, but it was that prior to that, it was illegal to brew beer in your home uh, for many years after Prohibition. And those laws just stayed on the books. And so Jimmy Carter switched that around. And I remember his brother Billy made a Billy's beer back in the 70s and that came out. So homebrewers, I think, were inspired by sort of a lack of interesting things to drink, and so they started creating their own, and then through festivals and everything else, people started to get turned on to these new varieties, some of them very old, hundreds of years old. Consumers got more and more hip to what was going on in these, with these homebrewers, and they wanted it on a commercial scale, and so it created a tremendous amount of opportunity for folks to the point of today we have more than 2,400 craft breweries in this country, so it's, it's gotten back to pre-prohibition era volume as far as the amount of beer that's being made here. In 2006, there was no homebrew shop in town, and so the owners, Colin and Shannon Westcott, realized that there was a need for a homebrew shop in town. When Hops and Berries opened, it pretty quickly became kind of the place to get your homebrew supplies. The main thing was that this is a beer town, and so we wanted uh, a place where homebrewers could find everything they needed. It's the eye of a beer storm. I mean, uh, I mean, Southern California's got a little thing going on in San Diego, and certainly Pacific Northwest has always been there, you know. Um, but Fort Collins is, is amazing. It's really fun for me living in Fort Collins, being able to drink beers that I know nobody else in the country is getting unless they're here. So New Belgian Brewing got started in 1991 here in Fort Collins, Colorado, and it was a husband and wife team at the time who were home brewers. And then they produced beer basically in their basement uh, for the first year, they decided to go commercial, uh, and then spent a year in the basement, and then moved into the old train station down the road, and then we, be we built this facility from the ground up in uh, 1995. Flash forward 22 years, and we are now distributed to uh, 35 states. Fort Collins is part of our DNA, and I think at this point we're part of Fort Collins' DNA, which is really exciting. Of course, we have some really big 
well-known breweries here, but also we have some amazing water. And that's one of the basic ingredients that you take for granted if you have it, and if you don't, you have to make it happen. And we're in, we're blessed with some really good brewing water. The water that we get from the mountains and that comes straight through our taps is phenomenal. And I think that is a big part of why the beer is, has got such high quality in it. So the reason you have a proliferation of really great brewers along the Front Range is we have excellent quality water here. We're top of the water source, you know, it's coming right off the Rocky Mountains. Start with good water um, and you're going to usually end up with good beer. Being able to watch someone do the whole brewing process in front of you, that's, it's kind of a new thing. It's a science and an art, so it's trying to look at that as a whole, but also it's, it's paying attention to the whole from the field to the foam concept. So it's, it's the agriculture, it's the raw products, through to the actual fermentation. That's age old. That goes all the way back to the cultivation of food and crops and everything else. Okay, so this is where the brewing process begins. This is what's called the mash tun. And basically the, the purpose of this is that the grain sits for an extended period of time with warm hot water and it basically makes a tea uh, from the grains turning all of the sugar that's caught up in those malted grains uh, into the water dissolving it in there so that we can use that to make beer. The technology behind brewing beer it hasn't changed since the Egyptians. I mean you get malts you throw it in water you throw yeast in you've got beer. All you really need is a, a decent you know, stock pot, preferably stainless steel, but not much, not much. The ingredients pretty much in a big pot and a big spoon. The most important rules for the, for the beginners, um, one is sanitation. You've got to sanitize the hell out of everything. Yeah. The other one is don't stop stirring. Find a good stir bitch. <laughs> That's somebody who will help you stir because if you're stirring for an hour and a half, you have to keep stirring. You need somebody to help you stir. There's always lessons to be learned from every batch, whether it turns out really good or, or not as good. So I think I enjoy learning lessons from those episodes, moving on and, and correcting and doing everything I can to have a better process and make better beer. It fits definitely with, uh, with the land grant mission uh, as far as meeting research and teaching and then outreach and extension uh, on the front range and in Colorado and all over the nation really right now the, the fermentation industry as a whole and especially the brewing industry is uh, burgeoning and just taking off. We have 17 students currently enrolled in the program uh, and another 30 or so that are looking to come online or are interested for maybe next semester. There's a need for, for the talent and education. Uh, fermentation is the oldest form of food preservation, but we really know very little about it. That one class now is, is something that um, at least craft brewers in Colorado look for students that have taken that class. It's, uh, it's well renowned for sure. It's a pretty cool period in our history here where you can take something that's your hobby and your passion and turn that into a very viable career. And that wasn't the case 15, 20 years ago. It was a lot harder to find work like that. And with the way breweries are growing at this point, finding people with good brewing skills is actually harder and harder to do. There's actually a really great home brewing club in Fort Collins that's called the Liquid Poets Society. That is a huge resource and that's actually been an incubator for several breweries in town. And they pretty much helped me get my start into brewing. Um, I went to my first meeting before my first batch was even done fermenting and I learned so much from those guys. They know a ton about beer. So it's been a good outlet for people to get together, try each other's home brews, share their own home brewing, get feedback, and then hopefully learn something. The coming together of the homebrew club and the homebrew shop was just sort of a synergistic timing. There was some magic there, and within a couple of months, we had 70 members or so. We'll get together. We usually have a table split up with light beers and dark beers and ciders and meads, um, and just kind of for the first 15, 30 minutes, usually just hang out and talk, um, try each other's beers. Talking about their, um, you know, the, the things they've learned, the things they failed on, the things they've discovered, helping each other shorten the learning curve. It's incredible. Some of the people there are very good at brewing, do some very amazing things uh, that are kind of beyond my reach. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge there and a lot of people willing to help you with whatever that may be. If you're just lurk, looking to learn and start your first batch, there's definitely a ton of people that can get you 
pointed in the right direction. I've been interested in thinking about home brewing for a while. Um, I love the beer scene in Fort Collins, and so when Richard said he was coming to the class, I tagged along. A week ago, my roommate and I came into the um, Hops and Berries store up in Old Town and actually met Greg, the guy who was working the front desk, and he mentioned that they have this brewing course, so I said, yeah, why not? It sounds like a lot of fun. It just was a good kind of intro into how the process works and what it looks like and what it might look like at home. So basically we do a class a month. Most of it is basic brewing, the extract beer uh, brewing like we did today. You can pick up a book and learn how to brew, but a lot of people really benefit from seeing it happen and talking with you and throwing questions out in the moment so that when they're at home in their kitchen, they've got the actual like visual experience behind them. Having an actual person to talk to gives you so much more information. If you're going online, you can find an answer to a question, but it's also going to be less likely to raise the next question. I love to bake and I love to try to play in the kitchen and see what experiments I can come up with. So it just kind of seemed very natural that home brewing would be the next step. It can be overwhelming when you first see uh, this is essentially five weeks worth of work and you know you walk out of here after two hours I want people to feel like they can do this and you know they take home the little piece of paper with the bullet points and kind of spells it out for them pretty easily. The biggest question is what will I want to make first? What style? Which one's it going to be? You try something if it doesn't work you know it didn't work and you try something else and until you get to something you love. It's a great date! <laughs> Come on, a, a woman who actually <laughs> oh, come yeah. to a brewing class? That's a keeper. I think it's a very exciting, probably the most exciting time to be a home brewer in this country, maybe ever. I think that's what draws a lot of people to home brewing is saying, I can make this. There's the best beer in the world and it's on tap at my house. It's something that I can take pride in, share with others and, and find enjoyment in. So I, I really hope I can continue home brewing here in Fort Collins and wherever I am. I think, you know, it's just exciting to think about what it could be and how it could happen. For the people that haven't started, it is that.